Well, so I know one thing I'm super interested in, I'm sure a lot of the producers listening are interested in as well, is how have you been able to grow your YouTube channel so quickly? You're at, let me pull it up here. You're at 283,000 subscribers. Maybe you can talk a little bit about what your process is. I know there's a lot to talk about, but maybe we could start with, um, well, first of all, what was your original goal with starting that YouTube channel? Uh, The original goal for starting the YouTube channel was to make money selling beats, like getting through, going through beast leases. So I would, you know, make a beat, make a video, and then put out the beat making video, hopefully bring traffic onto the beat star to make a lease. And then, you know, I didn't realize until later on that making a tutorial about beat making is not attracting artists, it's attracting producers. So, um, you know, after I realized that I kind of just, you know, went to more that route where we did more full fledged tutorials on music theory and production and things like that. But, you know, we still do a bit of the beat making every so often, but yeah, it didn't, it didn't start how I wanted to at all. Yeah. That's interesting. But I think that's smart. It's a great lesson of like, you know, you, you put out what you, you know, what you're good at and mm-hmm. then you see okay what who is that attracting and then be like all right well let me let me pivot let me adjust like i thought i was going to be marketing to rappers and singers or whatever but actually it turns out producers cool let me make the most of it and it seems like mm-hmm. you've really done that um i want to i want to get back to youtube but but since we're on the topic now that you've got that audience of producers how have you been monetizing that audience um so obviously youtube is um you know a sizable chunk of income for me just because i get a decent amount of views so google adsense they're going to be paying me monthly um right now i do want to get spotify up but that's giving me just like you know a couple hundred dollars or so based on the streamings so streaming platforms is going to be a big one and then how's the um i'm sorry to cut you off how's the money on youtube like i've uh, as far as streaming like just just to give a sense of like i don't know about it's, how many views and i know it's not like a you know Mm -hmm. certain amount per view what is it you get you make money if they click on the ad do you know is that the specifics of how it actually works no if uh as long as they watch it and you know if you know how they have like a it goes for 30 seconds but you can skip it after five seconds yes yeah that's every it still counts so as long as they're on that ad you are getting money from that but actually youtube is pretty much it might be the bottom in terms of uh streaming profits yeah. It's just such a good place to get like exposure and stuff that it's kind of necessary. But um, on average, people are making $1 for every 1,000 views. Okay, got it. So that's, that's but, about the, um, the reference. Yeah, but what people do is if you have a video that's over 10 minutes long, you can start um, implementing more ads onto your video. So everything before 10 minutes, you have one. And then anything after that, I'm not sure how many, I've never tried to max it out, but people are starting to put in maybe two or three. And that's technically doubling your income on that video. Got it. Got it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then my, you know, at least the way that I would approach it, and I'm, I'm guessing maybe you are to some extent too, is like streaming money is cool, but it's really where you're getting that audience. And then you can mm-hmm. leverage that into like actually making money. Is that, is that kind of your approach? Yeah, definitely. Cool. And so, and you're selling like kits and stuff or what are you, what are you doing for, for producers to, to, uh, to leverage that, to monetize that audience? Yeah. So that's definitely going to be another sizable chunk of my income. That's just coming from, um, yeah, selling items that are catered to our producers. So the main ones are drum kits and sample kits. Cool. Cool. And then I think like the last big chunk has been through sponsored, uh, sponsored videos. And then, you know, that kind of is synonymous with YouTube, but you know, me making a YouTube video, you know, giving maybe like a 30 second ad placement, they're going to give me, you know, a bunch of money up front or maybe an affiliate link. And then I make a, a, a good amount of money through there. Ah, okay, cool. And how does that work? Do they usually approach you and you kind of go back and forth and negotiate something or do you go through some kind of agency? Uh, no, the, those guys uh, have been approaching me, but there are agencies that you can, um, you know, sign up for. But the thing is they would be taking like a small percentage of whatever deals they find you. So right. I've been fortunate enough to have enough people reach out to me. Yeah. And yeah, it's been good. That's awesome. Cool, man. Um, so then what about, I want to kind of go back to the growth and how, and how you were able to grow it. So I think it sounds like first thing was recognizing who is actually interested in this and then like focusing yeah. on that person and then, you know, producers and yeah. I assume creating content that, you know, they like, 
what else did you do that helped you grow that that channel so quickly um so at the beginning when you're starting from zero i was really hitting like uh, the search engine so you know just being mindful of what somebody would search if they're looking for a video and then you know kind of making content directed toward that but in terms of getting traffic i feel like the number one best place is to get it into the suggested video um video so uh, area so if you watch a video there is going to be you know a little strip of other videos that are going to be suggested to you if right. you can get your video into there that's that's a hit got it and what are what are some of the ways to actually get into there that's that's the thing nobody knows <laughs> it that is like that is like <laughs> the answer to life itself that is the big <laughs> mystery but yeah it's really hard to get to and the you know the amount of views you're getting is like ridiculous have you seen um, do you know who Origami is? Yeah. Actually, I think, I think he just reached out to me, but yes. Yeah. So he had a video that went super, super viral, like maybe like two or three million views on, you know, a video where he's just making like a vid, uh, a beat with a kalimba. Mm -hmm. yep. And I can assure you, three million people are not searching up making a beat with a kalimba. <laughs> it's just, you know, if YouTube recommends you something, that's how you're getting, um, you know, the exposure and the clicks. Got it. And they're but it's probably, so hard to, they've got yeah. their algorithm, some combination of how many people mm -hmm. are watching it and how long mm -hmm. they're watching it and comments and stuff like that. And then somehow magically they've linked that up with keywords that are matching up with that video. Yeah. I guess is that more or less. Yeah. The so yeah, there is going to be a couple stats they will, uh, they will measure. People are saying that, you know, the amount of watch time is really important. That's why you can see gamers, you know, posting videos that are, you know, well ab above 15 minutes long. Um, there's like click through impressions where they'll, you know, see how many people actually click the thumbnail that they're recommending to you. So, you know, it could be that, you know, things like title and thumbnail, those are super huge. Mm. And then, you know, maybe like the initial views after the first, you know, like two or three days that might do it as well. There's like a lot of factors that go into it. So that's why it's kind of hard to tell what's going on. For sure, for sure. What about, so you mentioned titles and uh, thumbnails are big. What's, what's your approach on titles and thumbnails? Um, for titles, there are a few keywords that I found most effective. Um, you know, putting, making a beat in FL Studio somewhere in that, that's going to, you know, do pretty decent. I think that's specific for your audience, though. They've just really been accustomed to get that title for me, so I'm going to be sticking with it. I think um, having my face on a thumbnail as well, you know, having a fan base that's accustomed to me, if they see me right away, they're going to click that right away as opposed to, you know, getting, um, you know, a video without like my face on it or just like, you know, a plain boring picture with some text. But there is like a couple, like, um, there is a couple like pros and cons towards that because I feel like me putting my face in a thumbnail would bring back my subscribers who are already there. But right. having, you know, a thumbnail that's a bit more, you know, generic might be able to attract the wider audience. You know, they might, cause then to them, I'm just some random guy on, right. on their YouTube page. Right. So you have to, you, you know, just honestly, if you just test it out with your audience, then you'll see what works for you. But for personally, it's kind of been half and half. Yeah. I guess that makes sense to me that almost like you could think of some of them are like, Hey, I'm going to get my people who know me to watch this. And maybe other videos are like, this is how I'm, you know, prospecting. I'm getting new people in. And I guess mm -hmm. the cycle of both of those, then it kind of keeps growing. Mm -hmm. 